This video will show you how to install an aluminium bifold door. The aperture or space for the new doors must be flat, level, straight, plumb and square at every side. There should be a solid structure to fix the frame. Prepare the aperture by removing any old silicone and making sure everything is clean. Check for variations to ensure that when the doors fold, they will not be obstructed by plaster or tiles. Take three measurements of the aperture's height, width, and diagonals so that the opening is square and equal on all sides. Make sure you take into account the internal floor finish such as tiles, carpet or timber. All bifolds are supplied fully packaged and protected. Carefully remove the packaging by cutting along the drainage channel, the outer frame and the inner of the sash. To avoid damage, do not cut across the face of either side. First, check the aperture is clear and level. An additional 100mm length of sill is provided to allow for shoehorns. For this, the end caps will require cutting to the correct length. Silicone must be placed in either end of the sill before fixing the end caps in place. If additional sill height is required, we would recommend a continuous packer underneath the sill to bring it up to the desired height. If the base or brickwork is not level, packers should be used under the sill. These should be roughly 200 mm apart from one another. Any further and the sill could dip, affecting the running of the door. The sill should overhang the face of the building by at least 25 mm. Apply silicone to the surface and put the sill in place. To avoid penetrating the drainage channel, use the silicone instead of screws to hold the sill. Now confirm all measurements are correct. Although not essential, fitting straps can be used to help to hold the bifold until the frame fixing screws are in place. Run silicone along the sill rebate and an inch over the thermal break on either side. Make sure all drainage holes are free and not blocked. To position the bifold, ensure the top and bottom remain both plumb and square over the complete length. If using straps, fix in place. Place a minimum of four frame fixing screws either side through the thermal brake. The first fixing should be placed 150mm above the bottom corner. Even out the fixings, approximately 600 mm apart with twice as many at the top. Check that the clearance on the master sash is approximately 5 mm clear of the keep. Take care not to over tighten. Remove the 2 mm cover gasket and fix the final frame fixing screw.
Now insert the gasket back in place. Once fitted, if the bifold is not square, the jam can be adjusted by removing the gasket, loosening the main frame fixing screws, and loosening the screws on the face by the same number of turns. Then with a 4mm Allen key, wind out to the desired distance. Tighten both the face and frame fixing screws and put the gasket back in place. Each jam delivers a 4mm tolerance. Screw three fixings into the head for an average 3 meter door. Test all doors are running smooth. The outer gasket has a minimum of 5mm coverage over the frame. If required, the bogey wheel can be adjusted to suit. Once all doors are working as required, fix all final fixing screws to both the internal and external hinges. Before glazing, lock all door panels and fully engage the locks. Make sure the captive gasket is pushed all the way into the bed. Remove the top and side beading leave the bottom bead in place. Snap a glazing packer in half and position without covering any drainage holes. Toe and healing glazing of the sashes is crucial. Start load caring packers from the furthest door from the master door, then work along. On the master door, place a supporting packer between the back box and the glass to avoid it striking against the glass.
it's important to put the beading back into the same position it was removed from. Fit an adequately sized packer between the back box and the glass. Place all wedge gaskets onto a clean surface to avoid any contact with grit or dirt. Provide at least an extra inch in length for any movement or contraction when there is a change in temperature. Position the swing door at the point where it will stop, but ensure clearance between the lever handle and the next door. Unscrew the panel catch back plate and fix to the door. Ensure the position of the anti-rotation screw is pointed towards the hinge side. Join both magnets together to locate the position between the two doors and ensure the anti-rotation screw is pointed to the nearest swinging door hinge. Mark the position for the panel catch on the opposite panel. With the anti-rotation screw pointed towards the hinge side, secure the 3mm pointed anti-rotation grub screw. Finally, screw the outer sleeve of the magnet in place. After installation, ensure the doors are always opened and closed in the correct sequence. The internal shoot bolt handle is for disengaging the shoot bolt. The D handle is to push or pull the doors. If there is an internal key operated cylinder fitted on the intermediate doors, the key must be removed or it will break and mark the profile. To ensure correct operation of the multi-point latch lock, the handle should be lifted upwards to engage the hook bolts before locking the cylinder. If having vents within a 38mm add-on to the frame head, fix these in place once all plastering has been completed. You are now free to enjoy your fully functional, newly fitted bifold door.